Hi, I'm Beth, and today I'm going to talk to you about yarn, our all-time obsession, of course. But more importantly, and more specifically, we're going to talk about hand-painted yarns. Now, the yarn I have to show you today is Malabrigo Worsted. You know, I know, we love it. What else can we say? Now, I have several skeins here, and I don't know if you've ever been intimidated by going into the yarn store and picking out enough for a decent sized project. You know, if you're just getting one skein, it's no problem because you can just pick out whichever one you fall in love with. And then if you're trying to make a sweater or vest or shawl, you want to actually have these match. So the best thing you can do is to find one of the skeins that you really love the colors of and they may be wrapped in this kind of skein or they might be in a bin in the yarn store in a ball shape like that. Now don't be intimidated to unwrap it and look at it because that's the only way you're going to know to be able to match up the colors in the skein. And when you open this up you can see how it has the pink key purple color here and the green and the brown and they all blend together. And well, or not blend so much as their sections of color. Now this one has a nice purpley pink color next to the brown. Now I'm going to open up another skein and we're going to see if they blend well enough. Now I picked some pretty variegated kind of yarn. Uh, the subtle ones I had probably wouldn't be able to show up so much on the screen so that's why I picked these for you to see today. I haven't decided yet what these are going to grow up to become, but they're going to be spectacular, of course, whenever they do tell me what they want to be. The greens here, some of them have a little bit more yellow to them, so you have to kind of look at them and lay them out on the table together. Now I've got the two skeins here. Oh, and if you're intimidated by the process of unwrapping them and may, more importantly making sure they're wrapped up again properly, just ask one of the yarn staff before you unwrap it and then ask them to help you wrap it back up if you're not sure how to do that. And I will we'll show you in a moment. Now back to the yarn here. You can see it's got some bright greens and this one has more uh, over here more brown showing up. But the question is, do they all blend well together? Now I'm going to take one of these and I'm going to turn it so that the greens are together uh, on the ends and then the purple is in the center, purpley pink. And if I rotate it, you can kind of see that they aren't all solid. And that's the beauty of these kettle dyed and hand painted kind of yarns. They just make your heart sing, don't they? <laughs> they do mine anyway. And uh, the colors are just fabulous in here. But again, we want to make sure that it's going to match up to the other skein. So I'm going to turn the yarn so that all the pinky purples are together here. And here, this one has a bit more brown in the top than the other one did. So I'm going to hold these two together and see. Now, obviously, they're not going to be exact matches because even if the dye lots are the same, and of course, you know that that's the first thing you look at is the numbers on the label. If the numbers for the printed dye lot are different, and I'm trying to see where, where the dye lots are on these two. Here's the labels. Look at the numbers. Make sure they're all going to match up. And if the numbers are the same, that's when you pick these out. But I have had, in my experience, uh, seen that even when they're the same dye lot, uh, a skein from another dye lot matches even better. So that's not a hard, fast rule with these hand-painted yarns. So you can kind of fudge a little bit on that, that rule, as we say. So when you go lay these out on the table, as I mentioned, and as if you need four skeins, do it with every single one of them. Make sure that they're going to be satisfactory to your needs. And then, I think these match well enough, obviously, because that's why I have them in my stash. And then, I'm going to show you now how to wrap them up. The, uh, you hold the skeins in your hand like this. Let me back up so you can see a little bit better. And you twist, you hold one hand still, and you twist with the other one 
winding until it wants to curl on itself. When it starts doing that, you just fold it down in the middle and then push one of the ends. See how it makes like a little hole there? You can kind of shove the other little bit in like that. And that's all it is. And it, if the uh, way that they had them in this, the bin was more wound up tighter than that, then you could either leave it like this, because somebody else is going to come along and look at theirs, uh, that one to see if they like it. But you could keep winding it even tighter until it folds up even more. And then kind of replicate that same ball. I really prefer to have the yarn breathe a little, a little bit more by having it in a looser skein like this anyway. Alright, and go find some yummy, yummy yarn at the yarn store and now you won't be intimidated with how to pick out several skeins that match and blend well enough. Oh, another very important hint when you're using hand painted or kettle dyed yarns the best thing, if you're making a sweater or any other garment, is to alternate. Use the yarn from one skein to, to cast on or to chain on your crochet project and work a, a row and then start with another one and work back. And then alternate every other row. So there you'd learn a new technique too of how to use two different yarns in a project. Not difficult to learn once you get the hang of it. And that's the best way to have the yarns blend together, too. All right, thanks for coming by today, and we'll see you next time. Bye.